everyone, Don here with Paleo Tracks. Today I'm going to be talking about a uh, pretty important cordage making uh, methodology or skill. Uh, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty unique. I, I, I find it to be pretty important. It's something I utilize all the time, and it's kind of one of my uh, foundation stones for um, making cordage in a way. So uh, yeah, let's find out what that is. So stick around, much to see. I know you'll enjoy. So uh, what is this uh, mystery cordage I'm speaking of? It is basically center cut or continuous cut uh, leather lashings or leather rope. And how this really works is I, I take a piece of leather and I do what's called a center cut. And the yield of that is essentially long pieces of leather that I reverse wrap together for various applications, whether it's for lashing or something like this that goes around a uh, bow drill. Uh, that's the actual cordage on there. Uh, I can wrap it around bow handles like this guy right here, this is a center cut, but it's not reverse wrap, it's just cut and then lashed around the bow handle. Uh, I got a right-handed uh, tomahawk with a right-hand twist. This is actually lashed with um, uh, a center cut or continuous cut of leather, and it just allows me when I chop, the handle actually turns, allowing for wood to pop out. That's how you get a right-hand twist. Um, yeah, I can do uh, bags with it anytime I cut them out. This is one super long piece that you know, I've knotted up over time and it essentially connects to this little buckskin bag right here. But this is actually one continuous cut or center cut that uh, I did the entire buckskin this way and I got a nice long piece of cordage. So uh, pretty awesome. Uh, you can do it for larger pieces like uh, this little uh, quiver here. This is a much thicker piece, straighter along the way. Uh, yeah, so a center cut and a continuous cut is, is pretty simple to make. I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So to uh, do a continuous cut, and that's what I'm gonna refer to it from here on out, uh, essentially you can use a couple of things. One, I'm gonna start with a little bit more modern, that's essentially uh, using a knife. So you find a nice flat platform, you can have a down log on its side, and you're straddling that log, you can have a stump, you can really have anything, but you need something to stick your knife into. And you want your blade facing away. You can even do this up against the side of a tree and pull your leather down. Now, the leather that I'm talking about, or the skins that I'm talking about are hides, essentially remnant pieces, scraps that some people might throw away or they might turn them into little pouches or little bags. But what you can actually do with these is do that continuous cut and create a huge monster piece of wrapping, lashing, or reverse wrapped or braided cordage. And this is kind of how it looks. So once I have my blade stuck in that wood, that platform I'm going to be working from, I'll take that piece of leather and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it towards me across the front of the blade. Real simple, right? It's just like this. And as I'm doing it, I'm using the entire blade, kind of like a scissor, cutting it and holding the length. Now, why I like to pull it towards me is because every time I pull that leather towards me, I'm keeping my tips of my fingers at a certain length or a certain width, and it keeps it nice and universal. So when I do get a reverse wrap, there's no real major weak spots in there, and I can keep a, uh, an overall universal size of that, of that wrap. All right, so I've been uh, cutting for a little while here. You can see this. I've got one nice long uh, lashing, but I'm coming to the end. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna kind of make a, an unnatural turn or just kind of a uh, kind of a lateral small cut, just right there, and then start to um, essentially follow this outside edge around. And then, so this is my continuous cut, right? So I'm continuously cutting, I'm not ever stopping. And this edge over here becomes my new edge. And I just work it the same way as the other side. Clearly a sharp knife will be of assistance for sure, but there we go, let's get a better look. All right, so let's say I don't have a knife, right? For myself uh, and many others out there, we like to use more of a uh, primitive approach to things, maybe some stone blades or stone knives. Uh, and it's pretty much the same fundamental. But what you really have to do is clearly get rid of the knife. It's off to the side. And then you're going to find a, a platform or a workstation that's going to work well for you. 
Um, you can find some sticks, like this guy right here, that kind of have a natural crack right down the middle. What that allows you to do is jam a, uh, a stone flake or something on the inside. Um, even in the sides of trees, uh, some of the quaking aspens and some of the, the pines, the bark itself allows you to take a stone blade and stick it in there. Let's, uh, let's use this guy right here. But uh, just even on this little log, there's some natural cracks from the wood aging. All you have to do is just really stick that blade in there. Again, if you're using stone flakes, stone blades, you're not pushing with your hands, you're pushing with the tips, the pads of your fingers. You're never resting this up against any flesh because it will just cut you in. So you could have braided the edges, but why lose a surface or a, a cutting area? So use your fingers to push or insert or to draw set into an actual object. So I've got it like propped here in this uh, little stump and essentially it's the same thing. I just use this the same way as I would uh, a modern knife and it cuts the exact same way. Now I might not have as big an edge to cut with but I can still cut the entire thing. All right so stone blade clearly right. Well, let's say you're going to go one step farther um, and you want more of a knife because maybe you're you're in an environment that you can only find small sticks there's not huge trees everywhere but one thing that you can do is you can take a flake and again finding one of these cracks stick that flake in the crack and then as you cut your cordage initially as you're cutting it you might have to play the old uh, the old cut game where you just hold the flake in your hand and you're just working it through slowly making small cuts but once you get a decent sized piece maybe about this big you can take that piece yes this is already wrapped but then you can set it in that stick, wrap it around there three or four times, just like this, keep it attached and start that cutting process again. Now what this is, is essentially I can use it underneath my arm like this, and I can draw the leather this way. Now for this one, I'm gonna draw it towards me, right? Drawing. to do more of a cut at times. Sometimes it will draw through. A little bit more time consuming, right? Smaller flakes. Or you can actually uh, put your foot on this, hold it down, and draw it this way. You could sit with this in between your crotch. You're sitting on a log, a split log, something along those lines, and you're working that knife. But what you're really doing is just creating an extension uh, for you to hold. It's like having a third hand for the most part. All right, so I went through and I uh, finished cutting the entire a uh, piece of leather there and you can see that uh, it's got some length to it this is definitely be great for a single wrapping or on a bow handle um, or even uh, you know wrap, lashing this around some sort of uh, ads handle or tomahawk handle throwing around a stone blade something like this um, all of it's applicable what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to uh, reverse wrap this now there are some little scraggly ends sticking out some uneven pieces clearly you can see but uh, I'm not going to worry about that unless they're almost like dog ears, real, real big pieces. Then I'm actually going to take my blade and just kind of take them off in the most even-like manner as possible. All right, a little bit of a waste. Uh, yeah, let's do this. So just do a quick trim, really. Just watch how you cut it, that's the only issue. You don't want to cut into, because this right here is where I made a turn, you can see. What I don't want to do is cut into that, um, that turn point, because then it's going to be real, real weak. Uh, yeah, that should work. So, just like standard reverse wrap process, what I'm going to do is half this out, make sure it's even, find both my ends, right here. All right. Uh, boom, draw the way out and through. Now again, this looks very scraggly and uneven, and it totally is. But once I reverse wrap it, uh, I will come nice and uh, nice and clean and nice and strong. So uh, again, for that reverse wrap, right forward, I'm spinning my right fingers forward, my left back until I get that little, that little pop, that little crossover, does that right there. Then I'm gonna pinch that knot, pinch that turn, one on the top, one on the bottom, and with my right hand, I'm gonna to twist towards you. I'm twisting towards the camera, 
Then I'm reaching underneath, grabbing and replacing. And you can see that first turn right there. I'm gonna continue that process. Spinning towards you, spinning towards you, reach under, grab, go. Set and dress. Spin right forward towards you, reverse. And you can see it's starting to make that nice lashing. So I'm gonna sit here, make this for a little bit. This is not a uh, reverse wrap um, video clearly, more about that continuous cut, but this is uh, definitely some important. Now you can take this material and uh, totally cut it into three equal sections and braid it if you want. All right, so I've been reverse wrapping for a little while. You can see the, the, the length of it thus far, um, but it's coming along. A couple things to remember when you are uh, reverse wrapping. Try and keep the wrap as uniform as possible. Um, when you are using a leather like this, you're gonna have some thicker spots, you're gonna have some weaker spots, but I'm not using this for a bowstring. Um, I'm not really using anything except for lashing. Maybe I'm uh, building a pack frame and I'm using the entire thing. Or I'm going to cut a section off and use it for a, um, a bow drill or whatever the case may be. But try to keep it as universal as possible. And then as you're going through and using this leather, every once in a while, give it a little stretch. Make sure it's it has the ability to not snap and pop. Because what you don't want to do is make a huge piece and then give it a one or two tugs and it pops right in the middle. So go through that process now as you're, as you're making it. Give it a few decent sized stretches. Make sure it doesn't break and then just kind of move along so so before i roll out of here uh, just a couple quick parting shots if you're using a uh, knife uh, you can stick it in the wood however you want i like to find a, a fallen over tree out in the bush uh, straddle that tree stick a blade in the uh, in that in that log and i'll either draw it towards me or you can take that same blade same thing and push it uh, away from you. It's really your preference. Whatever's going to be easiest for you, whatever one feels the best, um, go with it. Uh, anytime you're using a stone flake, and let's say you stick it in a tree, and you're going to be working it this way, don't stick the stone flake way up above your face because if you pull that flake out and it comes down in your face, you can have some damage. Kind of stick it uh, below chin level so if it does pop out, it might hit you in the chest, but it's not going to get you in the face anywhere. Uh, remember that your objective is to Take a single lashing like this, and yes, you can use it just like this, as you've seen for, you know, a bow handle or uh, even the wrappings on a tomahawk or even something like this on a on a stone blade. Um, it's just a nice tight wrapping. Or you can go one step further, and let's say you want to make this a little bit stronger and thicker and a little bit more comfortable. You can use it for a a bag or something along these lines. You could use it as a belt. Um, this could be a key component for a stone sling. You could use the same. Um, lashing this entire thing right here as the, the cordage for that stone sling you might be using. A great little primitive hunting tool as well as a survival hunting tool if you ever find yourself in that situation. But know this, um, however you make this, it's, 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 it's entirely up to you. The, the objective is to know how to do this so if you are caught in that jam or you find yourself in that situation you don't have some sort of leather, hey maybe you can use your t-shirt um, maybe find some sort of fabric or some sort of flag or some sort of banner or something that you can do a continuous cut through and then reverse wrap it together. It's a way, it's not necessarily the way, but ultimately maybe your own way and that should definitely get you out of a jam or sustain your uh, thriveability out in the wilds. So again, uh, I'm Donnie with Paleo Chocks. Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and share, and uh, we'll see you in the bush.